isn't the one we were on, but this, this is like the one we were on. And are you embarrassing Jonathan and Dan? Looking like a tourist. Just a second. I'm going to get all around. Is that me? Oh, come on, Tim. Pretend you're on the Titanic. What the heck would I do that? Smile. Bon voyage. Beautiful landscape. You're going to be taking off real soon.
Side you're going to see Alaska, the other side you're going to see. I don't know, we might hit it. Oh no. Well, it's high tides coming in, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's really rolling in there. I'm taking pictures. All right. <laughs> Big tour coming yeah, up. Yeah, Linda. Catch a can. Catch a can. <laughs> you look cross-eyed. <laughs> Here's looking at you. <laughs> I see you. You got yours too? Well, it's going to be about 15 more poles. Oh, okay. Mostly, mostly coming down there tonight. <laughs> Just about everybody. Okay. okay, let's talk a little bit about totem poles. So everybody can get a little closer. Uh, generally, they're made out of cedar, red cedar. Now, if you're uh, a, a group of people who have no written language, how do you pass down your history or your myths or your legends to your children? Well, one way is with the totem pole. It's interesting, the bears eat the fish, so sometimes they'll just eat the, skin, the uh, skin of the fish, they want the fat content, and they'll leave the fish on the side of the bank, so they'll have hundreds of fish. The nutrients will go in the water, they'll go down to the estuary where the river meets the ocean maybe, and they'll have photosynthesis, the sun will hit that, they'll have plankton and algae there, the next year's fish will come, they'll be looking for something to eat, and they'll actually be living off the nutrients from the fish the year before. Same with the tree, the trees burn, the nutrients go in the soil, it's pretty acidic soil, some of the water here, a lot of tannic acid in it. But it's amazing how everything gets recycled back in the, the forest. I did promise you some totem poles. Or something. Metal on it. 
soft wood, the cedar, and they would make these marks, not only to carve it, but also to carve it. They had lots of leisure time, they had a lot of rain, a lot of food, a lot of game and fish, and they had time to learn to make totem poles, they had time to make masks and utensils, they had time to make clothing. So it was a pretty effective area. People ask, uh, about the park, I mentioned it's sort of in the thirties, it was a big park, it was a big village originally, uh, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, uh, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, most of these poles have been thirties and forties, one in Saxon has a date on it, 1892. The reason it lasted so long, they carved the back out in new shape. Cedar rots from the inside out, so there's a lot of oil in there. And if you carve the inside out, uh, they, they don't tend to last a little bit longer. This whole building is made out of red cedar, except for these two large poles on top. They're made out of sick of spruce. The reason being is that people have trouble. Uh -huh. If you get too close to the edge, we lose more people that way. Yeah, I got it. Got it. If you're going north, if everybody wants to get a little closer, please, I, I can talk. Since you're going north, what I tell people is, when you go about 45 minutes north, you're going to be able to go right by you. It's like a picture of a pole on the point. It's very possible to go anywhere. And that's a jet pole. The person, if you don't pay a jet, sometimes they'll actually create a totem pole to shame you. And the whole village, you're upside down, and maybe they're shaking money out of your pockets. But basically, it's the same hole. That's that hole. And this guy, he was landed, he was stranded on an island. They have what's called land otters. And it's kind of like an X-Files uh, Twilight Zone thing. You, be, you uh, get uh, caught by a land otter, you become one, and then you have to go out and uh, try to get other people to become land otters. And he, was, uh, he had a dog with him. And he had a the dog there, and he used him as a cloak. If you have a cloak, you can actually see if it's a real land otter or not. And every day, his brother and sister would show up. And he had that cloak, and you could tell said it was his brother and sister, but it really wasn't. And one day he asked to see if they had tobacco. And they had tobacco, and he realized that a real land otter would have tobacco. So this is one instance where tobacco was good for your health. It actually saved them, and he got rescued from the island. The Klingets said, where did turtle poles come from? They said it was washed on the shore, and it was a pole, and it was hard. The Haidas have a different story. That gentleman, from the second from the bottom, has a necklace on. That's called the Master Carver. He showed up one day in the village and said, listen, don't pay any attention to the noise you hear. And in the morning, they came out and there were all these totem poles in the car. And he had on the original pole, and he actually had those on his fingernails, the large poles. But now they have it on his necklace. And he said, each day, I will tell you a different story. Each bead represents a different totem pole story. And I'll tell you how to carve it and the significance of the pole. But there's a pole of Saxony. It has wonderful animals on it. Nobody knows the story. It's called a mystery pole. And we think it's a, thunder, a hummingbird or a thunderbird or a raven on the top. One day a hummingbird landed on the plane. We don't know the story. Have, in order to know the story, you have to tell the person who the pole. You always got to tell people so that uh, it can be represented. And each driver will tell you a different story. There's a book called Wolf and the Raven. There's a book inside called Princess Island. It's written by the son of the owner of the gift shop. And if he's there, he'll autograph it for you. Everybody kind of makes up their own stories. Nobody really knows. Uh, but uh, in the 40s, uh, the Wolf and the Raven had some anthropologists from the University of Washington you know, developed the parks here. And they